Now I tell you, I have witnessed to several people and, and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. They always try to throw you off with some little story they got, a little sad story. But the Lord is speaking to me and to others in here, said, when you tell them about the word of God, it left on them. When you tell them about Jesus Christ, that he died for them, for their sins, then the record will be left. Because how many witnesses that there are angels going to and fro, making reports on what's been said and what's been done. Amen? And we know, praise God, that the work of Jesus must continue. We cannot stop. Sit on the sidelines, sit on the bench like they do in sports. You got bench warmers. Yeah. People sit on the bench, they don't, be play, they don't play none at all. They sit there and some of them get so comfortable. When they do get in the game, they don't know how to play. Right. So it behooves every believer of Jesus Christ yes. to be a witness anywhere. Your light going to shine. You are a marked man, everyone. That's a believer today. The mark is on you. You can't hide it. You can't run from it. Amen. You need to run continually towards God's will. Amen. For your life. That is going to help us individually as a believer of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're so glad that Jesus Christ died on the cross and was resurrected. As we are exalting him today on this special day. I say to you, this is a what special day. Someone ought to praise God and say, this is a special day for a true believer. <laughs> this is a special day for the true believers of Jesus. And you know if Jesus hadn't died and resurrected, we will be lost. And no doubt in my mind, we will be on our way to hell. No questions asked. No second guessing. Amen. No speculation. You would be, I would be on my way to hell. But that's why I get so emotional and thankful. Amen. How many of you know you get emotional sometimes and, and you know that he was whipped? You know he was beat so bad. Crucifixion was a cruel, cruel death. The way to die. And we know the, in history it said the Phoenicians the one that started this. Crucifixion. And then it passed on down through different nations. And Romans, they got that crucifixion. Amen. And people, I tell you, you don't want to die like that. I'm telling you because some people even got crucified upside down. Amen. But we are today here to celebrate, I say, the resurrection. Because when Jesus was resurrected, so were you. Especially when you accepted Jesus Christ. See, the resurrection was for everybody, not for certain people. Not for certain color or creed or certain nation. Amen. But it, for all mankind to receive Jesus Christ into their life. Amen. And that I am so happy and proud in the spirit to be a believer today. Someone who knows that Jesus Christ died. Who trusts and know that I have a blessed hope in him. Amen. I know no doubt in my mind beyond a shadow of a doubt. When I pass on from the side, I will be with Jesus Christ. Can I get amen? Praise God. You want to witness? Go ahead. Praise God. We'll end that time. People do not want to hear about the resurrection. They don't believe it. They call it a, a theory. They call it just doctrine of man, but they are liars, and the truth is not in them. Amen. This came to pass. The resurrection is fulfilled, but it's still continually in our life today. Jesus can look down, and he can see you as a believer today and say, that's my son down there praising me. That's my son down there glorifying me. Praise God. And we have trials and tests. How I many of you have trials and tests every day? But you cannot allow that to persuade you uh, to walk away from Christ. Amen. To backslide or to go back into the begging elements of the world again. You cannot allow that to persuade you to take your hands off the gospel plow. Amen. You cannot let that persuade you to be as Lot's wife was turned back and was turned into a pillar of salt. Can I get a witness? And someone that said, help me Jesus to stay on the pathway of righteousness. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
And that's something to shout about today. The resurrection. Praise God. And you remember the last message that I spoke on you was taking humility over reputation. Jesus Christ thought it's not possible. He didn't want to take his reputation with him. He come down as a servant, amen, to be humble as a man, come down to save a world that was on its way to hell into eternal damnation, amen, that there was no way out. Jesus Christ decided and made a decision to empty himself out. Are you emptying yourself out today of anything that's stopping you for progressing? In Jesus Christ. Are you emptying out anything in you that's stopping you from pressing on towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? Are you letting something stop you, some habit get in your way? And some people cannot take it, people, when you start to be exposed through the word of God. How many of you know the word was exposed? People start to be nervous. They start to be shaky. They start to move around. But I want the word of God to prick me. I don't know about you. If I'm going the wrong way, I want the word to prick me. Amen. I want the word of God to correct me, put me back on the path of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the straight and narrow way is the way to go. But the wide way is leading to destruction. Amen. As we go into our message. This is the word of God. Every day. 24 hours a day. 365 days a year. Amen. And so on and so on. This is the word of God that spoke to your spirit one day through maybe through some, excuse me, through some minister or through some family member or through someone that spoke to you words of life and salvation come knocking at your door and you become to be convicted Amen. And you said, oh, I want this Jesus that you're talking about. Because let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the living water. And I thirst for that type of water. How many of you today is still, still thirsty for that living water? Amen. Praise God. And his name is Jesus. This word of God, and I like to say to you, are you truly convinced that the word of God is true? And let me tell you. Don't leave home without it. Let it be in your heart. Praise God. That you might not sin against the Father. As we move on in the message. Praise God. The name of our message for today is plain and simple. The resurrection manifests supernatural. The resurrection manifests supernatural. Amen. Amen. And before, i like to say to you, I'm so excited, and I want to be a part of this, to be like Jesus Christ when he died and was resurrected. I want to be in that supernatural body where no pain, no sickness, health, there's no problem here. You're in the supernatural power of God. Amen. And Jesus Christ, how, you, how many remember, was able to not only eat food with the disciples, but he was able to walk through walls and through physical things. Amen. Let's go to the scripture for today. Matthew, the 26th chapter. And I'll be a little para paraphrasing on a few scriptures. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Starting with verse 1 and verse 2. The resurrection manifests supernatural. Amen. We know that happened and come to pass. Give you a little time to get there. Praise him. And it reads as following. Praise God. And it came to pass. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, 
And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And look at verse 1. We was, Jesus was talking to his disciples back up into chapter 25, talking about, you did this in my name. Did you do this in my, in my name? Did you feed the hungry in my name? Did you go to the prison to visit someone in my name? Jesus was saying, that if you did it in the spirit of truth, you have done a good deed. But if you've done it in the flesh, to glorify your flesh, your works will be what? Burn up. Will be no uh, non effect. So Jesus was talking to his disciples. And also was talking about the five wise and the five foolish. <clears throat> How many know the five wise is one you want to be that take their lamps with them with oil in it? Amen. And you can burn it all day, all night, all night, all night. Praise God. <laughs> Praise him. Jesus said over in verse 2 that after two days, it's going to be a Passover. Feast or pass over suffer and suffer, amen. This was before Jesus Christ was crucified or went to the cross, amen. Hallelujah! Praise God. The feast that they had lined up, and this verse one and two ends Christ's public ministry to Israel and began the period of his suffering. Amen. Praise God. Skip on down to the same chapter, Matthew 26, verse 14. 14, 15, and 16. <clears throat> Praise God. And it reads as following. We're talking about a betrayal. We're paraphrasing. Then one of the, of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went out unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. And we see that Judas Iscariot was one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He is the one that was a treasurer that carried the money purse, praise God. And like today, people had to be careful in the church organizations, amen, that when they carry money, they had to be careful to keep their records correct. Because that will be called speculation in the midst if you don't have your records together before God first. And before the pastor of the churches, and before the congregation of the righteous. So Jews is carried. Seemingly he was upset. And you look up in the, the, the chapter before when that woman poured the precious ointment on Jesus. And they, they, the disciples wanted to sell this for much money. <laughs> I, think that, I think he was still upset about this. And so... The enemy slipped into him. He, he allowed the enemy to get at him, to make him be in greed. How many know the love of money is the root of all evil? I didn't say money only. I said the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen? When you love money to the degree, it will make you kill somebody and you are in trouble. Can I get a witness? In God's house. Praise God. Praise him. 30 pieces of silver. And one of the references I read was 30 pieces of silver multiplied times 64 cent a piece is nine, $19.20. And some verses are 21, but I'm going with the $19.20. And that was a price of a what? A slave. I don't hear you. Praise God. My Jesus. And Judas is carried, got with a chief priest, and they made a pact. They agreed. To betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Amen. And he sought every opportunity to betray Jesus. Moving on to the next paraphrase. 26, same chapter. 20, 21st verse. And then through the 23rd. We are talking about the Passover. That last Passover. Amen. And as they, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me or will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began, began every one of them to ask to say unto him, 
Lord, is it I? And we see right here where Jesus Christ was in that last Passover supper, amen? And he asked a question, and he brought up a question. and said, somebody in here are going to betray me. And they begin to ask questions. Praise God. Praise God. Moving on to the next paraphrase. Verse 38 and 39. Same chapter. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch for me, with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Praise the Lord. And we see that Jesus was telling them he felt something that one of his disciples, he knew it. Jesus already know you can't fool him. He already know that one of his disciples was going to do it. And he know who it was. And he was sorrowful. Amen. And Jesus Christ was around the garden of Gethsemane. Hey, can I get a witness? And he fell down on his knees and prayed to his father. Father, if you can take this cup from me, if you can take this time from me. That cup represents what the time that he's going through. Take it from me. If you can do it, Father, if I can escape going through the Calvary cross, if I can es escape being denied, if I can escape being spit on and beat and crucified and hung on the cross, Father, if it be your will, let this pass from me. But God said, his father said, he said, not my will, Jesus said, but your will be done. And that's goal for us today. We must say to the Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. In me, praise God. How many of you are willing to say that? Raise your hand and say, yes, I am. Praise God. <laughs> praise. Paraphrasing a little bit farther. Matthew, the 26th chapter, same chapter. Verse 47 through verse 50. And while he yet spake to Judas, one of the twelve came and with him with a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave him a sign, or gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I kiss, that is he. Hold him fast. When I kiss this individual, this is the one I want you to take. And we know it was Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As so we move on down. And forthwith, according to verse 49, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. This salutation was a deceiving one. It was not of love, as you might perceive or some might perceive. It was deception. How many of you know there is no deception in Christ? Amen. Christ did not come to deceive. He come to save. Seeking to save them that are lost. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good, I'm telling you. Moving on down to the next paraphrase. Let's skip on to Matthew, the 27th chapter. Verse 28. Praise God. Talking about Jesus Christ, what they did to him, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And, excuse me, 27, let's start there. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus unto the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Verse 28, and they stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it up on his head and a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Praise God. We see right here that Jesus Christ was took to a common hall. They asked him all kind of questions. How many of you have been to a court and trial before and people that ask you all kind of questions that don't make sense? You look up there and say, man, where are they coming from with this? <laughs> I'm sure Jesus Christ, he already know that because he's God, amen. They stripped Jesus Christ off the clothes that he had on and put him on a military cloak or a military robe. 
They was mocking him, making fun of him. In this verse of scripture, my Jesus. Praise God. And this is what we take so serious and more serious today. That Jesus Christ did all of this to save you and I. We take this very serious. The resurrection is real, people. It's not dead. The resurrection is been, have been fulfilled. Amen. It have come to pass. I don't care what people say in these other churches. They say it's not real, but they are liars and the truth is not in them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Moving on down. Still in 27th chapter. 28th and 29th verse. And then they put, what, a crown of thorns on his head with the big thorns and press it down into his scalp and blood came streaming down. What pain and what agony he went through for you and I. My Jesus, I want to thank you. That's why I come to praise you today and thank you every day of my life is my testimony. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Can I get a true amen out of a true witness, out of a true trooper today? Praise God. Are you standing with him? <laughs> Look at what he's done. Put the, they put the thorns on him. They marked him with a reed. Bone in, his, a bone in his right hand like he had a, 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 a a rod of authority, you know, they marked him in so many ways. And they bowed before him in a fakeness. How I many you know that people can fake when they bow before you? People can fake that they respect you, but you will find out. Sooner or later, time will tell, amen. Praise God that time will reveal, it will expose how people really is. Praise God. And that goes for us today and people today. Praise God. Oh, they'll try to fake it until they make it, but there's no such thing as that. I'll tell you the truth. Faking won't get it done. You must be real Amen. as real can be. Hallelujah. And we know Jesus Christ was a real deal. Amen. Praise God. Resurrected to manifest supernatural, the name of our subject. Okay. Let's move on down to the next verse of Scripture. Same chapter. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Verse 45. This is what our Savior did for us. He stayed on the cross. How I many know Jesus stayed on the cross from 9 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m.? Six lonely hours suffering for the sin of the world. And some people are not grateful, they are not thankful enough. They don't look at it close enough. They do not examine the fact that Jesus Christ did not have to do this, but he did it to save us. Amen. Praise God. Let's read the verse 45. And from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. We're talking about from 12 p.m. to 3. Three hours of total darkness darkness in the land and that representation darkness represents sin because people love to walk in darkness because what their deeds are what evil if you find someone creeping out at night they can't go nowhere in the daytime you better check it out something is going on in that area man something is going on and they are trying to hide things and they think no one to see it, but we know who sees all things. And we know who knows all things. Amen? Can I get a witness? From the sixth hour to the ninth hour. And look at verse 46. About the ninth hour, around three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, My God, my God, our Father, Father. Why hast thou forsaken me? And we see in this verse of scripture that God did not want to forsake his son, but he forsook the what? The sins that he carried. Amen. He carried the sins of our sins, and the sins were nailed to the cross that our souls wouldn't be lost, that our souls could be saved. As of now, Jesus Christ looked down through these generations and he saw you and I. He said, Oh, I died for. Pastor Linda Horn. I died for the brothers in Anchor and Faith Church. Praise God. 
and I died not only this, but for the sins of the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why have you abandoned me, Father? And this was showing just a, a time of separation between God and God. Amen? Because <laughs> Jesus is God. God and God. Amen. There was a separation because Jesus Christ had to come down in the natural realm. Amen. As a servant to save people. Amen. Hallelujah. Why has y'all, you forsaken me, abandoned me, left me all by myself? But Jesus knows that his father couldn't look at sin. How many of you know that God cannot look at sin? He had to turn away from sin. Amen. That's why he sent his son. That we would not live in sin any longer. There's no legal excuse for anyone to live in sin. How many of you know that the law was just occurring? It promoted that you couldn't live by the law by the 613 rules, amen, or the 613 laws anyhow. No one. Anyway, and you know that that one blood sacrifice... That all the sins of the people that gave to the priest once a year that went into that temple of the holy of holies. If it ain't going right, you know what's going to happen. The consequence will be death. The priest did not go in right. How many know the consequence would be death? He wouldn't come out of there. They had to pull him out with a rope or something. Because they had a rope and bail tied onto him. Can I get an amen in God's house? Praise God. And so this is so good to know that we don't have to do that any longer. The word about animal, goat, blood, goats, and sheep. Now we got the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He was the sacrificial lamb. Amen. That died for us. Let's move on. Praise God. Praise God. I'm getting happy again. <laughs> praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Still in 45, I do believe. 46. And look at verse 47. And some of them that stood by there... When they heard it, thought he was saying Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the rest said, let it be where we will see where the Elias will come to save him. And look at verse 50 before we go to another chapter. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. He gave, he, dis, he dismissed his soul and spirit. He had that kind of power. He said, I have power to take up my life and I have power to lay it down. No one can take my life. I laid it down for the sins of the world. Praise the Lord. God, I thank you for it, Jesus. Mm. He gave it up. Verse 51, and uh, behold, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. And the earth did quake. There was an earthquake. Amen. And the rocks were torn, or torn asunder. Hallelujah. And that's what powerful people. Woo! All the natural stuff that we are accumulating now is just temporarily. How I many you know this stuff ain't gonna last? This stuff gonna be corrupted. Amen. It's, it's gonna fade away. But what you cannot see is eternal. Your soul is eternal. Your spirit is eternal. Amen. You cannot see it. Amen. But you can see your flesh. You know the flesh is not eternal. Can I get an amen? It's just temporary. It gets old. How many of you know you get older and older and your body will tell you it's getting older? Hallelujah. As we move on down, go to St. Luke. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> 24th chapter. Praise God. The resurrection manifests supernaturally. Amen. Praise God. People, this was a supernatural happening. It was beyond the natural. No natural man could do this. No way. No way a natural man could go through what Jesus went through. He was both human and divine. Praise God. He was born under what? The spirit. Let's read the scripture over in St. Luke 24, chapter. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulchre, amen, bringing spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. This was early on a Sunday morning. They were coming around dawn just before the sun came up. But we know that Jesus Christ was resurrected, amen, before that time. And let me tell you, Roman time is different from our time. 
Let me tell you that on Saturday at 5 o'clock in the evening is Sunday morning in the Roman time. Can I get an amen in God's house? Praise God. And so sometimes in that night, before dark, before dawn, Jesus was, he rose. He was resurrected. That's why when they came to put spices on their body, Mary, Magdalene, and the rest of the women came to put spices on their body. And we will move on down. We won't say too much right now on this. It's going to be exposed later. Amen? They brought it to put these spices on Jesus' body. And look at verse 2. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Thank God that Jesus' body wasn't there. And I praise you today that your body wasn't there, Lord. I thank you. Hallelujah. Woo. They came in. And the stone, that big boulder, that it take thousands of men. I believe it take thousands to move it. It was great. It was huge. Praise God. And they found that it was rolled away. Woo. Look at something here. Praise God. And his body was not there. And let me tell you, they found his clothes there on it because the soldiers in the military, military of the Romans thought they were slick. They thought they could find out. They thought they could hold Jesus in there, in that grave. But they found out his body just resurrected out of the clothes. Dissipated. And they came in. And they found it's just clothes laying there. And he had a napkin around his head. And it was laying there. So how many of you are convinced that the resurrection is real? Praise God. I know I am. I'm real. I'm, I'm, I'm totally convinced. They found the stone rolled away. And they couldn't find the body of Jesus Christ. And it came to pass, verse 4, as they were much perplexed, there stood about, behold, two men, Stood by them in shining garments. Now, these was not no, no ordinary men here, people. Wake up. This is not a, no ordinary men. Amen. These were angelic forces. Amen. Angelic hosts. Amen. That was in shining garments. Amen. Full of anointings. And shining anointings in their garments that shine so bright. Praise God. And so beautifully white. Amen. Hallelujah. As they entered in. To find the body of Jesus. Oh, they was confused of what had happened. They couldn't explain how the stone was rolled away. Praise God. Behold, they saw these two angels there. Praise God. And we see in the four gospels of the New Testament that a couple of the disciples had different interpretations. Some of them had one angel. <laughs> Some of them had two angels. I think Luke and John had, had two angels were there. And Matthew and Mark had like one angel. And I did research on this a lot. But that's all right. We know there was an angel, some angel there. Amen? Amen? Praise God. And look what happened. Verse 5. And as they were afraid. How many of you would be scared to see something like this? How many of you would be shaking in your boots? Your shoes be want to come off your feet. You'll be so scared to see something so like this, so great. Amen. Praise God. They were so afraid that they bowed their faces into the earth or into the ground. Praise God. And they said, and these angels made a report and made a statement. and saying, why seek ye the living among the dead. How many of you know that Christ is alive? Praise God. How can you seek someone dead? He's not dead. He is what? Alive. He's been resurrected. Praise God. Woo! Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. They were so afraid. The angel said, why are you seeking living among the dead? You see, they had forgotten. The natural man will forget. A lot of things. They had forgot what Jesus had told them from the beginning. How he will be what? Betrayed. He will be put, put in the hand of a simple man. And what else? He will be what? Crucified. They had forgot. As we move down to the last close of this message, praise God. I 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Look at verse 6 to close. The angel said, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Praise God. Jesus has risen. Hallelujah. He is alive. He's not in the grave any longer, but he has been resurrected. Not only in that time, but in your life as a believer of Jesus Christ. Wave your hand and say, Lord, I want to thank you for Jesus. Wave your hand in the air like you just don't care, like no one is looking at you at all. You are so glad today that Jesus rose from that grave with all power in heaven and earth, trusting in his hand. People, he is alive in us today. How many of you know you have Christ in you? Amen. The hope of glory. May the Lord bless you and enjoy this Resurrection Sunday because people, he rose in my heart. Let me tell you, he rose in my spirit. I didn't know which way to go, but he rose in me one day. I thought I was all right, people. I thought I was righteous in my own sight. I was self-righteous. If you feel like raising, that's good. I was self-righteous. Because I thought I was so good in my moral standards. I thought that meant salvation, brother, minister. That was not. God got me. I'm glad he did, people. I'm glad he captured me. I'm glad to be caught. How many of you are glad to be caught by him? Praise God. Well, God bless you today. I'm, I'm everyone that's just grateful. I see that you got a resurrection power in you. Praise God. Keep it. Praise God. I love you guys.